Hi, you're watching Petodendron, and in today's video, I'm showing you some beginner plants that I've had from the very beginning that still managed to top my favorites list. I'm showing you some really cool beginner's plants that you won't get bored of. Woo! Welcome back to my YouTube channel. And if you're new here, hi, welcome, I'm Patrick, and I love plants. And if you do too, you should definitely hit that subscribe button. I love going on these planty adventures and taking you along with. So if that sounds like something that could be fun for you, then hit that subscribe button. In today's video, I am at California Greenhouses. It's a great wholesale nursery and they have some awesome plants. A lot of the plants are great for beginners, but I'm here to show you some of the awesome beginner plants that I never got bored of because, you know, beginner plants often go to the basics because they are great for beginners like ZZ plants or snake plants, but I've gotten bored of those. <laughs> no offense, I mean, they do still have their place, but these plants that I'm going to show you today are plants that still excite me, plants that still tempt me to buy them. So these plants will not get old for you. These will be good investments and something that you could have fun with for now and for years to come. So without further ado, let's get to some beginner plants that don't get old. They have some really pretty Aeschcananthus. These are also known as lipstick plants. These are great for beginners. And this is a plant that you'll enjoy more and more each year, even as you collect other plants because this will bloom for you. So that's a plant that you can grow with. Here's a Carnosa Crimson Princess. This one has reverted into a regular Carnosa. Here's a Crinkle 8. Or no, this is a Carnosa also. These are Crinkle 8s. I believe the Crinkle 8 is a hybrid between the regular Carnosa and the Carnosa Compacta, but they have these I said it before, and I'll say it again, Hoyas are great for beginners. And this is another plant that will keep you happy for many years to come. These will grow and these just get more and more impressive the bigger they get. And they'll also bloom. The cool thing about these blooms, Hoya blooms in general, is that they're fragrant for the most part. And um, flowers with fragrance is just another fun aspect of growing plants and collecting them. What's really fascinating is that Hoyas come in all kinds of scents. You know, it's not just... And they smell like other things. Some Hoyas smell like cinnamon. Some Hoyas smell like chocolate. Some Hoyas smell like beautiful jasmine or even like just an ambiguous floral scent. And some of them have like the scent of like a men's cologne or a perfume. 
So that's super fascinating. Ah, these are great. Tenanti Burl Marks, I can't say enough good things about them. I just love the leaf pattern and how the backside is purple. Prayer plants are great because There's something so fascinating about a plant that moves on its own. <laughs> and these do that. This is the Maranta Lucanura. And I have to say that this is one of the easiest prayer plants. I have one growing outside. It's in full shade, but it's outside. And it's it's been really happy. I've even forgotten to water it. So... It's semi-drought tolerant. It didn't die. <laughs> Syndapsis pictus exotica. It's great. It's called a satin pothos. It's technically not a pothos, but it might be my favorite pothos. <laughs> Does that make sense? This is a good way to add a splash of color. If you have a nice section of trailing plants, this particular trailing plant is just like a burst of color. It looks like a pot of gold, right? And when you have it surrounded by a bunch of dark greens, that neon lemon lime color just pops. And you could do the same with the neon pothos right there. I love Brazils too. Brazils never get old. I have been gushing over Brazils on my channel since the very start. Here's a golden pothos. These are great. We already know that. Ooh, look at how splashy these uh, Hoya pubicalix, pubicalix are. Here's some eight inch hanging pots of the Aeschcananthus, the lipstick plant. I don't think that's variegation. But yeah, these put out really cool flowers. Bright red flowers. They look like lipsticks, hence the name. But I really am loving the old classic house plants that have been popular for generations. That's what I'm finding a lot of joy in right now, like African violets and you know, lipstick plants and spider plants. Ooh, these are nice. Big eight inch pots of the philodendron heteraceum. So just like the regular heart leaf philodendron. These are great. Excellent for those jungle vibes. And these trail beautifully. You'll have a long trailing vine of beautiful little hearts in no time. They're really easy too. They, they don't require a lot of light. They don't require a lot of mind reading. <laughs> you basically just water it when the plant is dry or the pot is dry. Super easy and uh, super beautiful. Monstera adansonii. This is another classic plant that will never get old. And this propagates easily, so these will be great for when you advance and you wanna prune and propagate them and give some plants away to your friends. Monstera adansonii. <laughs> 
Monstera Adansoniae is great for that. Or if you start, you know, doing some swaps and stuff. I once got a Monstera Adansoniae cutting when someone gave me a Syngonium elbow cutting. And I thought that was just such a cute gesture. So I always include cuttings of stuff whenever I swap or give away anything. Look at this pretty Syndopsis Pictus Exotica. See? This just never gets old and I still, I still, I still get tempted to buy pots of these. Like, right now. This is just so perfect. Syndapsis Pictus Exotica. Hmm? This blue star fern is calling my name. That is gorgeous. I have to find out how much that is. Got some more um, Tenanthi Burl Marks. Another thing that I love about these is that you can literally forget to water it. For a prayer plant, that is pretty impressive because prayer plants are known to be pretty thirsty. But this guy will bounce right back. I don't even give it distilled water. Ah, traps, beautiful traps. Here's another prayer plant that never got old to me, the Tenanthi. So this is the non-variegated kind, but this is the variegated kind. The Never Never plant. And I love how it grows on stilts. I love when prayer plants do that. I think it's such a cool feature of the plant. And this is another one that is not demanding at all. Actually, it wasn't doing too well inside, so this one actually loves a lot more light than other prayer plants. And as soon as I put it in my outdoor patio, it started thriving again. Ah, traps, 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 traps. <laughs> if you fell for a croton, I'll just say this. Um, stick it outside and it will thank you. It'll be so much happier. These are great landscaping plants. They just, they like a lot of sun. So if you have one inside and it doesn't look so great, stick it outside and go on with your life, I guess. <laughs> look at these cordyline varieties. These are stunning. I've always, I wonder what this one is. But these are really cool. I'm going through a, a cordyline thing right now. I'm really loving cordylines. Ficus altissima. This is a great plant that a beginner would do really well with and this is a plant that I still love. You know, anything with variegation you will never get bored of because you can always try to encourage more contrast of the variegation. You could play around with stuff like that in plants or you can make it not as variegated if you'd like. But this is a great, easy ficus. It's not as finicky as its cousin, the ficus Audrey. And this is still such a joy to grow for me. Same thing with the Peace Lily Domino. See this? These two leaves are so beautiful. And I still admire my peace lily domino all the time. It's a great beginner plant that never gets old. Same thing with the peace lily domino. See this? These two leaves are so beautiful.
And I still admire my Peace Lily Domino all the time. It's a great beginner plant that never gets old. Ooh, pretty leaf. All right, more Hoyas. Any beginner plant that will flower, I'd say will keep you happy for many years to come. And these are great because you don't even have to wait for the blooms. I love just the splashing on the foliage is enough for me. And I just absolutely love it. Crimson Queen. See, I've had mine for a little over, about a year and a half. And it's like spilling and cascading over it. And I fall in love with that plant so often. <laughs> so I highly recommend these, especially if you're just starting out. Your dollars to joy ratio will be through the roof. Well, the joy part. <laughs> Ooh, traps beautiful traps and these are my weakness I still get tempted yeah these are like the siren song to me you know <laughs> the metallic sheen on that it shines kind of like a an 80s bridesmaid dress and I love that. These ficus elasticas, the variegated ficus elastica, the variegated rubber tree, the ficus tanica. This is one that absolutely has not gotten old for me. I've loved this from the beginning. It was one of my first plants that I purchased actually. And it's still going strong. It's a lot taller than what it was when I first got it. But this is one that you will enjoy for many years because these look so beautiful when they're grown. Let me show you. So these are the ficus tanicas when they're grown. They're blushing from the amount of light that they're getting. These aren't rubies. Although they look like they are. I don't know, actually. That one might be. This definitely isn't. But see how cool it looks? Tall. So this is definitely something that can grow with you and your hobby. Like This is a plant that you can definitely bond with. And this is the Ficus Altissima. See what I mean by how you could play with bringing more variegation out by increasing its light? I think that looks so cool. Yeah, ficuses are great. Ficuses are awesome plants to learn with, too. You can do a lot of things by, you know, experimenting on cutting it and seeing where the growth points come out of. See, this is what happened there. You can also get into things like notching the plant in order to encourage more branching out. So if you notch this, by notching I mean like, in, like slicing a deep, cut in there without actually going through the whole stem and you stick something in there to make it think that you actually cut the top off and what happens is 
it'll start growing in places that you wouldn't expect. <laughs> and you'll have like an even bushier tree. Traps, 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 beautiful traps. That's a tall trap. Oh, and some more cute traps. <laughs> These are ficus audries. This is a beautiful monster at Ansoniae, growing on a totem. So you could play with it too. You can take the cuttings, have it grow up a totem, and you can have the rest of the plant trailing down a hanging basket. There's lots you could do so you will not get bored with this plant. And here's another plant that I still admire. This is the Raphidophora tetrasperma, also known as the Monstera minima. I don't really care for that name because it's not a Monstera. <laughs> it's a Raphidophora. But these are really cool. These vine quite profusely. So these are great plants to have climbing up. Just give it some support and this will make your home feel like a beautiful jungle in no time. And here are four inch pots of the Hoya. We got some crimson queens and some pubicalyx, but these are such good growers that you can have a nice full bushy plant in about a growing season or so. Um, I have a few that I've grown from just two leaves that are now this size. And I have some that were this size that are now um, in six inch pots. So these are really cool because you don't have to work towards getting bigger leaves or maturing the leaves. These will just grow as is if you just take care of it. Oh, that's a really pretty one. That's a princess queen. Orchids. If you are curious about orchids, I say go for it because these never get old. These will rebloom for you if you treat it right. And I've learned that it's not that hard to treat it right. So I highly recommend orchids. These mini fowls, by the way, are so cute. I've been loving mini fowls because of the profuse blooming that they do. Isn't that awesome? Staghorn ferns are so cool and they're so easy too. What's cool is that when they grow in these moss baskets, I'm guessing that you could just leave it and have it take over and it'll kind of just grow all the way around and turn into a big ball of staghorn fern glory. It is amazing. These are so cool the older that they get. This is one that you kind of will have for many years and you might even pass it down to your next of kin. <laughs> this is a cool plant and this will never get old. Well, that's it for today's video. Thank you so much for joining me. I had fun showing you some of my favorite plants that I've had since the beginning. Going down memory lane, I hope you got some further information, some plants that maybe you were hesitant about, some plants that might have looked boring but aren't. These are the plants that I started out with and have not gotten old, so I suggest them for you and may you have many, many blissful years of growing these plants. I had a lot of fun, I hope you did too, and if you like this video, you know what to do. Please throw me a bone and give me a thumbs up, and if you want to see more of my plant videos, come plant shopping with me. Hit that subscribe button. I can't wait to see you in the next video, I just don't want to miss you too much, so if you could show me some love in the comments, and I'll meet you there. Bye!